Hi, I'm Aaron and I show you today how to use the Raptor CLI to import your Nessus scan to SysRaptor. The first thing you need is to install Raptor. You can do this with pip install Raptor and add it to your path. Raptor is a command line tool. Uh, I have already installed it and to configure it you can use Raptor conf where you can enter your uh, server URL, your API token. For the API token you go to uh, your SysRaptor installation, go to your profile, API tokens, re-authenticate for security reasons and create your API token. Just add your token here, copy and paste it uh, and to interact with a dedicated project you enter your project ID. You can find your project ID by going into your project and by copying the UUID of your project. Then you can store it uh, then you have it automatically available uh, when you call Raptor. You will also need an export of your Nessus scan. This is the uh, Nessus file extension that you will need. This is an, internally an XML that our CLI tool can process. You can now use just cat Raptor Nessus and pipe it to Raptor Nessus minus minus upload. And what happens now is it processes the report and uploads the findings from your report to your SysRaptor installation, uh, aggregated by the target IP address or by the target host name. Let's see how that looks like. Uh, now we have a node structure. This is one node, one parent node for Nessus and one node per target where in the main, uh, in the main node we have the target IP for example or the host name. Uh, we have some information about the host a markdown table with uh, our vulnerabilities and the vulnerabilities themselves. Now that might be useful to have them as findings in your report. This report is empty so far. You can use raptor nessus minus minus help to see what options you have. Uh, we will use the push findings switch and we will also want to update only medium to critical vulnerabilities for example so we can use the switch severity filter. So we again use cat your Nessus XML, pipe it to Raptor Nessus push findings, severity filter medium to critical and enter. The findings are now aggregated by finding. So we will have a look immediately. We will go to our project and the findings appear. We have one critical finding having the title, the summary, the affected components, the technical description recommendation. And for this finding, for this medium finding, for example, we have now two uh, affected components, which is 111 and 112 IP address. If you always want to keep those configurations like the severity filter, you have the option to run raptor nessus minus minus conf. There you can add, for example, your severity filter, uh, exclude certain plugin IDs that shouldn't be pushed or include certain plugin IDs. If you include plugin IDs, only those will be pushed. And you can store it to your config file and those uh, settings will be used automatically then. I will now not store it. If you realize, oh, that's not what you expected or you have a huge number of findings from your Nessus scan, you can uh, use another Raptor plugin. You can say Raptor delete findings. Let's look at what options we have there. We can delete findings that contain a certain search term in the title or, or exclude findings from deletion that contain something. So we will now delete all findings. When we run this, then it's a dry run. It just shows you what findings uh, would be deleted and with no dry run, you can actually delete them. Now you have the option to customize what gets pushed to your report. We actually use templates uh, for mapping values from the Nessus scan to the fields in your SysRaptor scan. And those are simple uh, template files that you can modify. We can do this using Raptor plugins minus minus copy Nessus. This command copies those uh, template files to again to your home directory under sysraptor and then plugins and Nessus. So we can have a look. 
what this looks like. We have the Nessus uh, directory in our home directory where we have the findings and Toml files. So we have now the global.toml and here you see that those are the variable names taken from the Nessus scan that are mapped to uh, our uh, Sysraptor fields. Now, if you want to add some uh, custom text, like for the summary, we can also use three uh, double quotes for multi-line editing and add some static text. The synopsis of this finding is, and then this uh, template from your home directory will override the templates that are shipped to you by Raptor. So we can now go back to uh, our command line and push the findings as we did before. They appear in our report and now we have the additional static text of the synopsis of this finding is. Now if you think that you're missing some information from your Nessus scan, you're right because uh, we are only using a few variables from the Nessus uh, output. Now, if you want to see what actually you're missing, you can use another switch, which is again, piping your report to the Nessus plugin and with minus minus help, we see the options. And this is the option I'm looking for, template variables. Uh, so we will use that option type it to more, where we get a JSON structure. You see that this is a, a, a list, an array of findings. Uh, they are uh, aggregated by the plugin ID. So we see there's a variable plugin ID that we can use. We can see the plugin name, the plugin family, and uh, additional uh, variables that you can also use in your templates. So we could go for the plugin ID, for example, if we want to uh, add the plugin ID to the summary, we can just adapt the template. The plugin ID of this finding is, and uh, those placeholders are Django template language. With one modification, we use uh, HTML uh, comments too. Uh, I will show you later why we did this. So the plugin ID is plugin ID. Let's check again if the variable is correct. So that's uppercase. So we will use the plugin ID. And now we will again delete all findings and push again. And here we have the plugin ID of this finding. Now, what if you don't like the title of this finding? Uh, you can now use the plugin ID uh, to create a custom template for this plugin ID. For this, we can go back to our home directory we, where, where we have our findings and copy the global toml. This is the, this, this is the template we're using for all Nessus findings that have no explicit template available. And so I will copy this plugin ID and rename this template to this ID. And here we can uh, create our own title. This doesn't have to be a variable. So instead of Samba NDR request, blah, 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 we can use remote code execution in Samba. Again, deleting the findings, pushing them. We should now already see the finding was now called remote code execution in Samba while the other findings are not affected by this change. Here we see remote code execution in Samba as we defined it in our custom template. If we're not satisfied with the CVSS score, we can also uh, increase, for example, the tech complexity, take the new CVSS score, put it into our CVSS variable, and here we go, have an updated CVSS score. Now we have one more problem. The thing is that those templates are stored locally on your computer and you would have to exchange those templates uh, with your colleagues. We offer in SysRaptor also the templates section where you can have predefined finding templates. And wouldn't it be nice to put your findings that you define for Nessus also into your global template management system? 
and that's what you can do. We can use the raptor nessus minus minus help to find out the, what the switch is called. This is uh, called upload finding, finding templates. So we use raptor nessus upload finding templates and now your local finding templates are pushed to the templates in your sysraptor. So you see we now pushed three templates. Now it appears in our templates. This is our new plugin and it has a tag which is Nessus. This is the plugin name and the plugin ID. And it also has the tag Raptor that we know that this finding comes from Raptor. You can now use this, uh, this template to further customize it. And now you see that why we used HTML comments. We used those HTML comments that you can also use the templates uh, without uh, having to use them via Raptor and those contents will not be displayed and everyone using this template in your in Raptor will see what is meant to be here. We can now customize this title for example and say it's a critical remote code execution in Samba. Save it and push the finding again and now it will take the remote template for creating your uh, finding. We already see it takes critically remote code execution in Samba, which is our, uh, which is taken from our plugin. Now those are duplicate in fact, so we can delete this finding and have it replaced by this one. One more thing that you can do is that if you have multiple Nessus reports uh, and Raptor should aggregate the same findings among multiple reports, you can do this too. So you have Raptor, Nessus, Again, use minus minus help for seeing the switches. Instead of piping your Nessus XML files into Raptor, you can use the switch minus i, Raptor Nessus minus i report.nessus, and you can now specify report1.nessus or and more files. So you can uh, by this join multiple Nessus files. And I will again use push or yeah, let's say push findings, severity filter medium to critically. That also works. The findings exist, so we skip them. Uh, we have to delete them to add them uh, newly. So that's how uh, uploading findings with uh, our Raptor CLI to your Sysraptor works. The same works for other plugins like for OpenVAS and uh, Burp will follow soon. I hope you liked it. Have a nice day and bye bye.